Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. My name is Josh. I know it's not Stai. Hello, it's me. It's coming back to you with a couple more of these pro overanalyzed videos now that the Overwatch League is underway. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it as much as I am because I've been absolutely loving it and I've got a real humdinger of a game for you today. This was probably the most requested pro game of Overwatch that I've ever had in terms of, hey Josh, can you go and break this one down for us? Yes, I can. Absolutely. I was watching this one and I was absolutely loving it. And it's an amazing game on Temple of Anubis between two of the top tier teams in Overwatch League. That is Soul Dynasty versus the Dallas Fuel. Now then, Temple of Anubis is an interesting map. It's sort of floated around in the meta, in the consciousness of Pro Overwatch for a while. It's generally considered the best 2CP map. It's often defined by the sort of long-range Widowmaker play, in, especially on the first point, and whoever takes advantage of the sightlines better will come out on top. That being said, there are a number of ways to stop that happening. You're going to see that coming out of these teams here. So Soul Dynasty on the setup at the moment. Already you see the May coming out. That's purely to get that May wall there, that big sort of golden... Slightly awkwardly colored May wall. I know, don't eat the yellow snow, kids. Anyway, it's just to get the Orisa set up on the high ground here. This Orisa Widowmaker combo is actually something that I'm very excited about. It's something that we've been seeing pros use more and more and more and more. It's because the Widow game is basically all about peaking and sightlines, and this just gives Widowmaker basically a bunker to play from. She's nice and safe up here. She can just play around. She's absolutely okay, and she can just shoot people non stop from up here. She can actually adjust her positioning very easily as well, sort of jumping about all over the place. Now, a couple of things I do want to comment on in terms of positioning in a moment or two. So we'll take a look at the positioning of the Soul Dynasty as the camera pans up and pause. Okay. Right, before the game even begins, let's just talk uh, team comps, let's talk positioning. So you can see that most of the team is set up over here, right? You've got four big important things over here. Now, crucially, you're missing two heroes here. One of them is Ryu Jae Hong. He's off down over here. He's on the sight lines over this way, so he can provide these harmony orbs across the way. The other one is Munchkin. Munchkin, I think he's somewhere over here at this point. He's playing the tracer. He's just going to be trying to get into the back lines and trying to cause problems. And what's he going to be trying to cause problems for? Well, you have Dallas Fuel at the moment set up with a triple tank comp. These guys are running to fight on the point. Effect has a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and his ability to try and carry this game in terms of being the sheer raw force of DPS, the raw source for the DPS on this one, is pretty huge. He has to be able to find angles and find snipes and open up the way for his team. If he doesn't, then Fleda can absolutely take over this game and absolutely cause a huge number of problems. Basically, if Fleda starts winning this Widow duel, he's going to be able to just bounce around all over the high ground, all over this map, and constantly cause problems for Dallas Fuel. Dallas Fuel, meanwhile, want to get stuck in. They want to get into a stodgy, close-range teamfight. That's why the Lucio is so important, and why it's going to cause so many issues for Soul Dynasty eventually, when Dallas Fuel are going to start pushing themselves onto the point more. Taimu, as well, going to have to provide a huge amount of DPS. All of these players are going to have to perform, basically, and, well, let's see if they can. And so the gates are open, the doors open up, and instantaneously you're going to see Dallas Fuel just take it a little bit steady as they start advancing to the choke point. They're just going to have a quick peek, have a quick look, sneak in through the underside, and then are they going to do anything fancy? Not at all. They're just going to take the time here. They get halted up, no problem. They try and get a halt of their own. This is why you have that D.Va on the high ground. D.Va's job is literally just to conserve defense matrix to always eat up those halts. Meanwhile, Effect going on a cheeky flankeroo. He's just trying to look for an angle. But what's happened already is that Dallas Fuel are already on position, and crucially a couple of kills have just gone through so I'm just gonna pause it here because these were easy to miss like you're watching effects perspective and it's kind of hard to see what's happening exactly but that kill feed has already been lit up and what I want to point out is the fact that Ryu Jae Hong was set up over here originally he's had to drop down poor lad and he's actually died over here like down below where fled uh, where effects name is and so he's just been caught out on his own. You lose your Zenyatta against a triple tank comp, that's absolutely enormous. The DPS potential suddenly drops dramatically on the team. You want that Zenyatta to be shredding these big, tough tanks. And Munchkin, who's going to be doing most of that shredding, has also already fallen to Taimu. This is a big loss, and you can see Sol now starting to scramble, trying to figure out what we're going to do about this, because they don't really have any answers anymore. There's nothing they can really do. What this is also doing is it's setting up a really powerful snowball for Dallas Fuel, because they won that so convincingly. Beautiful snipe out of effect. Like, you blink and you miss miss it ladies and gents because Fleda was just over there for a split second he just turns nails the headshot amazing job by effect he's just going to start ranging forward it's a little bit unusual to see the Widowmaker stick around basically for second point but they usually try and do this to convert momentum a couple of changes coming on to Dallas Fuel as well Time Moot swapping off that Roadhog getting onto the Reaper Reaper very typical here for second point on Temple of Anubis you get him onto the point and he's very difficult to remove one interesting thing happen, uh, happens here Zumba sort of gets baited in basically and the tanks just go and hunt 
him down. I'm not entirely sure what Zimbo was going for because no one was actually up there. No one was sort of contesting that high bridge above the, the main choke on Temple of Anubis. Zimbo flies up there, just gets caught out, demect instantaneously. This has freed up effect massively for this next point because he knows that he won't have a diva breathing down his neck. The worst thing he's going to have to contend with maybe is Miro on the Winston and with support he's going to be a-okay. Crucially as well the supports for Dallas Fuel have come online, the support ultimates are there, they've managed to get the Reaper on the point and it's just a simple matter of cleaning up. That was a 1 minute 46 second Temple of Anubis ladies and gentlemen and I wish my Temple of Anubises were half that quick. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Dallas Fuel's first defense, and you can see that they've opted for a very, very different strategy there. Instead, going for this sort of middle ground hold, this is more what you would see typically on ranked, where you would have people holding this kind of position here on this little platform in the middle. They are playing a very, very anti-dive comp, and now, if you you know, I say that you might see this on ranked, but don't try this at home, kids. Do not try this at home, because you might have noticed something very, very peculiar about the Dallas Fuel in the terms of their support players and their support lineup. They are only running mono support. They are trying to bait out a dive comp. They are trying to play in, like play around a dive comp. They want Harry Hook to sort of fold in when the dive comes in. He's going to try and do some damage, provide a nice healing field for most of the team, and then Taimu, uh, XQC, and Mickey can do a... Sh well, an absolute shed load, shall we say, of damage. Well, Mickey can contest the high ground as well, if necessary, if there's a Widowmaker on the enemy team. Meanwhile, before the, just before the gates open, Sol running a standard as standard could be dive composition. So let's see how this defense goes for them. Effect even starting out amongst the team. So basically, this this is sort of the one decision I want to call into question with Effect starting right in the middle of the team. That's because Chips has nowhere to run to. You want that Widowmaker to act as like a mobile anchor point for the Mercy. So if the Mercy needs to get out, Mercy can get out. Because Sol going to just scout out a little bit, going to take a quick look and then spot out the dive. Hey, let's go in. Beautiful spot by Fledder there just to see that trap because that could have done a huge amount of damage. But they're looking to try and get that focus target, looking to try and get that kill or two. Don't manage to quite do so. Zumba gets d but the damage is starting to roll in now as Fleda starts his process of cleaning up and starts getting a couple of these kills. That said, Dallas Fuel have done a really good job just surviving that long and just keeping alive. They've only lost one person, and crucially, all this healing coming from Chips High End is building up his ultimate much, much quicker than his rival Toby. So Chips, already on 60%, Toby floating around 45 at the moment. Now they've managed to survive, and they sort of managed to find this dirty back alley, even getting the res onto XQC, so that's going to bring a lot of extra hit points, a lot of extra tankiness to the this comp, so they sort of nicely get set up in this back alley. Harry Hook even getting onto that high ground position. He's on one hit point. He's on one hit point. He's still doing damage. He's still actually killing people. He's still hurting people. He's not just hiding away, waiting for his healing. He kills Toby on one hit point. That's so frustrating to see. This has bought enough time for Chips High to get that Valkyrie online. Chips has Valkyrie. Toby's dead. Guess who wins? Chips reses everyone, and suddenly the attack, uh, sorry, the defense holds and is really looking good for this team. Unfortunately for Sol, they sort of get a bit scattered as well. You can see the cameras on effect here, but I really do think that Harry surviving on that one hit point made a huge, huge difference in killing Toby, getting that Valkyrie set up, and then the Valkyrie coming through, picking people up on the point, and managing to prolong that hold. It's absolutely superb play. That being said, there's a huge downside, of course, to running one support, which is that if there is a threat on the enemy team, something like, say, a Dragon Blade, you have no good answer for it. The only answer they have for it is if they manage to try and get a Tactical Visor up and running, and Harry Hook has has just that at the moment. He's trying to hunt down a target or two, but Fled draws Dragon Blade, gets two kills already, and sure, Harry Hook can equalize it here with the Tac Visor, but he's already sort of amongst the team. He's already amongst Soul Dynasty, and Soul is a team of multiple threats, right? You have Fledder, who's absolutely terrifying, but Munchkin is terrifying, Zumba's terrifying, Miro's terrifying, Ryuji Hong is terrifying. They're all kind of scary, if you ask me, really. Anyway, Sol do a really good job of making it through that, and they make it through without using support ultimates. This is crucial. A big part of Temple of Anubis is that ability to snowball first point into a victory on second point. They only needed Dragon Blade. Meanwhile, Dallas are trying to build up ultimates immediately. You can see Harry Hook has swapped away from that Soldier 76. He's playing Zenyatta at this point. Miro jumps in, and this is actually really nicely handled by Dallas initially, where they just drop the bongo, and all that damage, you see Miro's already dead, like, the damage that the bongo gives this team is huge. That said, Zumba sends in the bomb, kills Harry Hook in the process, so Harry Hook gonna slowly, slowly be building up this ultimate. Zumba using the bomb clears a pathway for Soul Dynasty, and because Toby still had that ultimate, he still had that Valkyrie available, you can just pick Miro up, and they can just re-engage once again, so instantaneously starting to get advantage, get onto the point, and get this dive rolling. Once they manage to get there, manage to get a couple of kills under the belt, well, Soul Dynasty are just doing Soul Dynasty things, essentially, and just going to be cleaning up with this dive comp. Dallas rushing for the stall, but don't quite manage to do so.
Very, very nice play there by Cell Dynasty. Just good, clear-headed play. They know what they have in the back pocket. They know that the enemy team has very little, and so they seize advantage of it. And suddenly we have a real game on our hands. This is where 2CP can be really, really exciting. These assault maps can sometimes, you know, turn into a really, really slow sort of stodgy game where it's just like, oh god, it's just, it's all a bit slow, it's all a bit sluggish. But when you get games like this where you get these very fast attacks where it's a very heavy attack oriented play, it's really, really exciting. Temple of Anubis especially seems to provide this and this is why I'm never disappointed to see it pop up in a map pool. But because, you know, it's Seoul set a really good time. They set a really good time, but Dallas set one of the best times that has ever been seen in professional level Overwatch. So suddenly, well, Dallas get to defend again and must be feeling still pretty confident. It looks, you know, it was a good attack, but that, that time disparity, 6 minutes 14 left on the clock is just disgusting. Seoul with a respectable 4 minutes 48 left on the clock, but my lord, that can't be overemphasized. Anyway, Dallas... Not really changing anything up, and they're not really going to change too much up. They are happy with this defensive lineup, defensive composition, and even the same defensive positioning as before. So Dynasty, meanwhile, still opting for very, very heavy dive-oriented play. Let's see if the same happens again. And let's see if the dive can go any smoother. Ooh, Miro just gets his, his nose sort of poked there by effect. Just, you know, he just he poked his snout out and, well, uh, Widowmaker blasted off effectively. He feels pretty bad, man. Anyway... Just biting the time. Soul Dynasty, again, I like the, the efficiency of these pushes. With that two second defense matrix, they have to be so efficient. They dive right into the bomb, and Flat Out basically choking on a Venom Mine gets launched off to the side and dies pretty much instantaneously. Zumba does get a good kill on Harry Hook, but unfortunately, the Mercy's still alive. Not anymore, and suddenly, this is the difference maker. This is the difference maker from the first push to the second point, is that Mercy goes down and already because he harry hook just realizes yeah there's no point staying on the soldier we have to swap up what we're doing because we've just lost this point without that mercy there just to provide all those reses provide all that healing it's just not going to work anymore soldier goes down mercy goes down there's no more healing for dallas fuel and so soul dynasty can just clean up easy as you like crucially as well soul dynasty have managed to build up a valkyrie of their own toby in extremely quick time has managed to build up his own valk and will be trying to leverage that in the next push so moving on to the attack, Dallas haven't really changed up too much, just opting instead for that Zenyatta. Going to be playing relatively aggressive positioning at the moment, Sol just jockeying for position a little bit, just trying to get through this initial choke. Dallas fuel then back up, and now the push truly starts to begin. They start advancing the way forward, and Sol just trying to get onto the point. Beautiful, beautiful play from Taimu, who I absolutely love this one. He just baits him in, just baits in Munchkin with the bomb there. It's a trap, effectively, and Munchkin just gets exploded, but it doesn't matter because Toby has built up the... Valkyrie and and that that amazing play is suddenly undone instantaneously. So oh, mercy, mercy. I could talk about mercy for hours. I'm not going to. I'll, I'll spare you for now. Anyway, uh, Flutter has managed to build up a Dragon Blade and will use that. Basically, there's no support ultimates on the side of Dallas Fuel at the moment because Chips has spent most of his time dead. Harry Hook only recently swapped and Ryuji Hong with a lovely bit of repositioning here. Like if you are a Zenyatta player, I, I play a lot of Zenyatta myself. Like I really like the fact that he just he's willing to just move away from the point, find an angle where he can help contest respawn stuff like that and get a little bit of extra value but that's Ryu Jae Hong for you he's always getting value no matter what hero he's playing so Seoul hit back really, really hard, had a really strong offensive that time, and they're changing up their defensive lineup as well. They're going to be playing a more dive-oriented style. They spotted out that Dallas were playing triple tank, so hey, let's anticipate that and not play around the Widow this time. Let's play a more dive-oriented um, team lineup and go with that. And you can see that they're already set up, already in ambush, just waiting in the sort of, you know, it's almost like a, a cowboy movie. They're waiting in the hills. Instead, it's, it's Egyptian buildings, but hey. And see how it goes with Dallas Fuel. Dallas Fuel, of course, not changing anything up. They're just spotting out, hey, there's no Widowmaker, there's nothing contesting us. Let's just try and get onto the point. But hey, Mercy's lagging behind slightly, takes an absolute boatload of damage and just gets annihilated. Now, this does mean, this lack of Widow does mean that Effect can just set up wherever he likes. He just has to be sort of wary about the Genji and stuff. But if Effect can just set up where he wants to be, and hey, Fledder does manage to get the kill on him, if Effect can do what he likes, then he can get a couple of kills pretty reliably. Like, this is what the Widowmaker does on this map. And it does mean that these tanks have managed to make it to the point. Lucio is still there providing healing. I think Lucio might have even had Amp it up by the time he reached the point. So that's going to provide a lot of healing on the point. And now that you've got these tanks here doing a lot of damage, it's really, really strong. Nice little flick there by Taimu at the end of that hook. Just a very, very minor thing. But he hooked Zumba in, turned him to the side, and then placed him off the point so he's not contesting. Really nicely done. Just a little thing, but it makes makes the difference. Does make a little bit of a difference. I like it. 
effect ranging forward. Fletter going down is actually huge here because he was one of sort of the saving graces, did have that Dragon Blade available to him. Timing unfortunately gets bombed, but Dallas Fuel do a really good job here of just sort of slowing down the push a little bit. XQC puts a barrier down, they stop for a moment, and Chips manages to get sort of the, the manual, the slow res off on Taimu. They know that Taimu is super important here. These close range heroes, these high damage, high survivability heroes like Reaper, Roadhog, so important on these fights. And you can see Taimu doing such a good job here, trying to just contest respawns. Fletter tries to deal with effect on the back line, but the point's still being flipped. And this is one of the issues you'll see Soul run into time and again, where they're trying to deal with effect on this sort of long sight line but they also have to deal with the point, have to try and slow down the point, and if they don't have enough people there contesting and fighting, they're just going to die super quickly. Miro's trying to do what he can, but unfortunately he's just bouncing away. You can see he's peeled off again just to try and deal with effect, but that just leaves one Genji, one lone Genji on the point to try and contest that. F pulls out the Dragon Blade, but Dallas used the most effective counter in the game. There's no stronger crowd control than death, ladies and gentlemen, and it just shuts down that Dragon Blade, unfortunately. Looks like there might be signs of hope here, but really nice hook comes in from time, which just slows it down, just gets rid of the Tracer, who's going to stall him out like crazy. Ultimate starting to come back online as well for Dallas, so they're just going to clean up and now we're in full storm mode. It's kind of an inevitability and there we go. Dallas managed to take it. Some very happy people in the audience. I wonder if Stylosa was jumping around as well. I assume he was. That's, that's just sort of how he is. Perhaps not for Dallas though. And okay, ladies and gentlemen, on to the next defense. Dallas Fuel, not changing anything up. You know, they, they like this team comp. They, they like the style. So Dynasty, happy to play into it as well. Happy to play the dive straight against it. So let's see how it goes this time. As it's gone pretty well for Seoul most of the time with how they've been playing this one. Again, just biding the time, checking, having a quick look, spot out the effects on the back, uh, on the sort of the distant high ground. Wait a moment, wait for defense matrix, push in using the matrix. Very, very nice and clean. Managed to get the tank set up on the mid ground and start pushing forward instantaneously. Now Zumba's taken a lot of damage and has been demeked pretty much instantaneously, but hey, that was a deflect kill. Harry Hook helping out nicely. And when basically most of your DPS and your Mercy have gone down to the Genji, well, it's probably time to call this one quits because that one play from Fledder was more than enough to end this entire thing. You can see Dallas instantaneously start changing up the team comp, changing to ha uh, Harry Hook onto the Zenyatta, changing Taimu onto the Sombra. XQC picks up the Winston and Effect changes up to the Tracer. So every Everyone pretty much swapping except Chips and Mickey. Meanwhile, Soul didn't manage to build up too much. They do have a Tracer Bomb, but crucially, Dallas is going to occupy this offensive position and going to try and take as much damage as they can because they want to build that EMP that Taimu has very, very quickly. You see Taimu trying to poke away at people, almost gets onto Toby, and Ryuji Hong actually taking a, a fistful of damage from Effect as well. Doesn't quite get the kill on it, but they want to build up this EMP nice and quickly because that's going to make a huge difference in these coming attacks. Soul getting a bit slowed down, a bit mired down here, does get a good pulse bomb onto XQC, but not before XQC can retaliate. He does go down, but it's still looking a little bit dicey here. Now, I will highlight that Harry Hook's been doing an extremely good job on the Senyata as well, and that's really going to pay them dividends. He's already built up 66%, well, almost 66%, almost two-thirds of his ultimate from that one fight, and that's going to make a huge difference in the coming engagements. Meanwhile, Chips high in is sitting pretty, but Soul Dynasty have a lot of resources in their back pocket. Crucially, Fletter has his Dragon Blade, Toby and Ryu J. Hong have their support ultimates available to them. They have a lot of ways to make this push work. Dallas do have the EMP in the back pocket, and they're going to try and make something of that EMP play. You can see they go for this very aggressive dive, but Ryu J. Hong's been to this rodeo before. Like, this, these tactics, these Sombra tactics were pioneered in Korea, so instantaneously, support ultimates getting used very aggressively here, just to push through it, counteract what could have been a Sombra EMP dive. That said, Harry Hook, again, has done such a good job of building up this ultimate charge He's managed to build it, but he's gone down. Oh no, in the back line, but it doesn't matter. Chips has got Valkyrie activated, so Chips can just sort of float around. He's looking for him, picks up Harry Hook, and hey, it's feeling pretty good at this point because Fletter still holding onto the Dragon Blade, sees that Valkyrie runs out, draws the Dragon Blade, but oh no, Harry Hook has built up Transcendence. So, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Maybe it's all going wrong for Seol. Maybe it's not quite going to plan, but this is Seol Dynasty we're talking about. This is still one of the best teams in the world, and you can see Munchkin lining up the kill feed. This is the Seoul Dynasty dive that is going to be so scary to teams coming in. Munchkin, Fledder, Miro, and Zumba, like, included in that mix. Like, all of them pretty much are all high threat players, and so this has just become a pound-for-pound -pound fight on the point, and Seoul Dynasty are winning it, and that's absolutely crucial. Now you can see Dallas Fuel desperately swapping off to different heroes chips on the may trying to slow things down there's a very very nice little defense matrix there just catches the pulse bomb stops it exploding him doesn't
that Madam Munchkin just shoots him anyway. But still, nice little touch. I thought I thought it was cute. I thought it was nice. But when you start hitting this point, there's kind of an inevitability, and especially when the support ultimates from Seoul Dynasty come back online, well, it's kind of inevitable that Seoul Dynasty are going to be flipping this point eventually. And Fledder even gets another Dragon Blade for good measure just to help clean up that little bit faster. Again, just stall, 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 stall. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I mean, we didn't see too much stall in this game. I can't, I can't complain about it too much, and it's a good job by Dallas Fuel just to buy a little bit of time. Beautiful right click by Ryu Jae Hong to round out that round, and suddenly we have a game on our hands. Like this is looking really good. This is one of the best two CPs I think I've ever seen, and it, it's nice to be treated to these occasions. You had a really good one in Hanamura in the World Cup, and now we've got a good one here at the Overwatch League. Of course, Dallas Fuel shouldn't be fretting in the slightest. They still have 4 minutes 30 left on the clock, they have plenty of time. Now interesting to note there's a difference between this defense and the defense we saw earlier at Assault Dynasty when they played this Widowmaker comp on the high ground, and that is Ryu Jae Hong is up with them on the high ground. Previously he sort of started out over here and ended up dropping down and get, ended up in an awkward position where Taimu and I think Effect just managed to find him and isolate him and kill him. Now he's playing more with the team, they're playing this sort of stocky style, only Munchkin is separated from their lineup. Just sort of an important little detail to note here, it is going to make a difference overall. Nothing changing, meanwhile for Dallas Fuel, they like running this triple tank comp into this Widowmaker play, they're just going to sort of scout out, have a quick peek, see where they're holding, and hey, they're holding onto that back line, so let's use that Lucio speed, and let's use, uh, let's just take a time, basically hide away, they, they're nice and safe in here, there's no like Junkrat spam or anything that like that, just slowing them down, then just going to start crawling the way forward, maybe try and get a cheeky halt in, but nope, they know that that's not going to really work here, so they just get straight onto the point, amp it up, use just a speed boost them over there, but oh, dearie, dearie me, Soul, playing it patiently, they've, they've conceded did a third, but it doesn't matter when you're going to win the fight, and they just sort of take the time, stay on the high ground, they haven't lost anyone to picks this time, and can just start ramping up these kills. Good cleanup there, coming from Zumba as well, Zumba free to drop down, now important to note Ryu Jae Hong has dropped down, so he's not going to be part of it, Mickey, oh poor Mickey, oh Mickey you're so fine. But you're also getting stalled out there, lad. Unfortunately, a slow respawn for Mickey. You can see the effect also sliding off there to the side. It's going to be very, very important. This Widowmaker versus Widowmaker duel that's going to be happening. Thank you, Overwatch League, for bringing up the minimap for me. It's just important to know that effect has managed to slip into this sideline here. Mickey, poor Mickey, coming from the respawn. They're going to have to wait in the doorway for him. Uh, but effect versus Fletter, this, this duel here, this sightline duel here, is going to determine a lot of pace. Because if Fletter gets freed up, if he can just move around freely and just snipe from wherever, like, say, over here, or over here, or over here, he can cause a lot of problems for Dallas Fuel if they can't find a way to slow him down. So then, it's going to be a big, big task. And crucially, something important is about to happen. L literally right at the end of this... Oh god, I can't catch it. Right before then, just look at the bottom right, like, sod the replay, sod the re- I know it's exciting, but still, sod the replay. Uh, Fledder has activated Infrasight. This means that Effect cannot get set up to where he wants, so... Sure, Dallas Fuel can sort of steam onto the point, but Effect has to play so carefully, spots- Oh, there's a Rita barrier down here! Oh, it's nice to save- Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh dearie me. Oh dearie dearie me, I think it just got destroyed there, you couldn't quite see the barrier, but I think it got cracked, judging by XQC's cooldown, so unfortunately, yeah, Effect just runs out, tries to find somewhere safe, turns out, ain't so safe, and dies pretty much instantaneously. Seal Dynasty with a nice, simple cleanup from that point onwards, just good brawling on the point, Ryu Jae Hong not dying as well, it's just making a huge difference, because hey, that Zenyatta is there to shred tanks, and when you have Zenyatta, Orisa, and Diva, and a Tracer as well, hunting down these tanks, they're going to die pretty quickly. So far, so good, I would say, for Soul Dynasty. Again, Effect just sliding off to the sidelines, just looking for that pathway. But Fled is, Fled is wise to these tricks. Fled is wise to this kind of stuff. He's been sort of expecting this, and so he just goes, picks around, oh, hello, Effect, how are you, friend? Goodbye, Effect. Thank you for playing. Now, it's not going to make all the difference in the world. Unfortunately, it's chips high and just drifts on by with that super speedy Valkyrie, goes in for the res, picks effect up once more, and now it's looking better for Dallas Fuel as they manage to get themselves set up on the point. Res is coming through. Toby is going to counter, however, with a Valkyrie of his own, so he's going to pick up a couple of people. Support ultimate's getting used. Everyone take, you know, take five, take a breather, and just wait it out. Fled is in an extremely good position, however. Effect, however, is not as he gets hunted down and killed by Toby. He just sort of ends up... Popping up behind Miro and Toby on the high ground ends up going down to the mercy. You better not... Well, you don't want to tell your friends about that one, let me put it that way. And now it's just the two tanks stuck in the back line. Like, these are two tanks slowly getting cleaned up, but this is all playing to see old Dynasty's favor, right? And even though they use the supercharging, the fact that they use the supercharger, like, it is scary, don't get me wrong. A, a Roadhog with a bongo sort of damage amping him is pretty terrifying. 
but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. And sure, the mer like the Mercy is in there to tie and could make a huge difference, but Miro puts an end to it, drops a bongo of his own, and that's given this team comp more than enough damage just to clean up these tanks once and for all. And it's a lot of time now gone for Dallas Fuel. Like, they only have 1 minute 20 left on the clock, and they've got to make something happen now. You can see that they're doing dramatic change-ups on their team lineup. So then coming out, time who changes up, takes a bullet, takes another bullet, and takes a, a very quick respawn as well. In fact, even changing up onto the Genji. Chips does manage to get the res on Taimu, so it does manage to save the team a little bit of time. But you can see, Fleda now doesn't have an enemy Widowmaker to worry about, so he can just kind of set up where he likes. Just pops off Genji's head, no problemo for this lad, as he's set up on the back line. It's all A-OK, -okay, it's all hunky-dory, and with losing that Genji, like, that's a huge DPS threat now gone. And suddenly Dallas Fuel are in this really awkward position. Their tanks are now stuck in the back line, like, their tanks are all over the place, just getting hunted down now. Infrasight's active, they know exactly where these tanks are hiding. SUC takes a shot to the dome, takes another shot to the body, and down he goes, cleaned up no problem. And, you know, if you're if you're naughty at school, like, you know, the class is all talking, and the teacher says, you know, oh, it's your own time you're wasting. Dallas Fuel, it's your own time you're wasting, in this instance. It's, it's not good, because that's just run down the clock massively. There's only 20 seconds left in it. And uh, they're basically back to square one. They're still just pinned outside of the doorway, despite ending up all over the place, scattered to the four winds. And now they just need to regroup. Ten seconds left now, and they've got to get there into two support ultimates, into a Widowmaker. How do they do it? Well, Chips high in. It's forced to activate Valkyrie nice and early. Just uses that just to flutter on through the point, and we'll go straight on through. Fleda going to try and set up, tries to set up the shot. Meanwhile, Toby's activated support ultimate of his own. Ryuji Hong goes down really early, has Transcendence in his back pocket, but still dies. Toby might just be able to pick him back up but ops not to I think no he does pick him up Sorry, I, I misremembered. Ryuji Hong activates uh, Transcendence, that's right. Ryuji Hong activates Transcendence here, but crucially, Effect has done enough damage to build up that Dragon Blade. So once that Transcendence gets used, that's the signal to Effect to go. It is go time, ladies and gentlemen. He needs to make a big difference here. This is do or die, so there's no point saving these resources. He has to use that Dragon Blade just to make sure that they win the fight, stay in the game, and have potential maybe to draw this, because it doesn't matter that Seol have lost his first point. They need to take the second one. They only have 30 seconds to do it. Now, how are they going to do that, ladies and gentlemen? Well, Taimu has tactical visor coming along. Mickey has a bomb coming along. They can use that to clear a pathway. You can see Seoul Dynasty changing up their team comp massively, as well as Reaper comes out, Anna comes out, Lucio comes out, these sort of more sorely, more dramatic, high-impact instantaneously heroes where they want to get a big fight and big kills coming up straight away. Dallas Fuel... Push in using the tactical visor, but Soul Dynasty do a really good job of just surviving through it. They make sure they don't die, that people are still alive. Diva Bomb gets used just to clear a pathway, gets Dallas Fuel to the point, but they've used two ultimates now to make it all the way to the point. Now they've sort of run out of steam. Meanwhile, Soul Dynasty can just take this slow and just keep on stalling. They have a lot of very good stall here, as you can see, as Toby's sort of bouncing around the point, just stalls it for a moment or two. Reapers come back now, he can stall it for a while. He has that Wraith form, of course, it's just going to buy them even more time. And suddenly, the wheels start sort of falling off the Dallas Fuel train a little bit as they, they have ultimates coming up and chips high and crucially almost has Valkyrie and oh no, Miro isolates and kills him and that's going to make a huge difference here. I think if that Valkyrie came online, that would have made an absolutely enormous impact in this game. A couple of people would have survived longer, a couple of ultimates maybe would have come online, but now Seol have control of the point and people are just scared to stand on it without getting sort of focused down. Nano Boost even getting used there on Totobi, so we've got a Boostio on the point, just stalling things up even more. Who would have thought a Boostio wins it? SUC jumps off the point, but it doesn't matter, he would have died anyway, so don't give it. You see too much grief for that one. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Seoul wins in a very, very tight, very, very high-intensity temple of Anubis game. It was an absolutely superb match, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I have been Josh as one voice amongst many here on the Unit Lost channel. It's been my absolute pleasure to bring this game to you, and I hope to bring plenty more Overwatch League action to you guys in the near future. Let me know what you guys thought of this match. Let me know what you guys thought about day one of the Overwatch League as well, or just the Overwatch League in general. Have you been watching it? Have you been enjoying it? And hopefully, have you been having as much fun as I have? Thank you for watching to the end. Toodles.